Welcome to the first lesson of the complete beginner's guide to Unreal Engine 5. This entire series contains five lessons that combine all the concepts and instructions you need to complete a 3D video game that you can play and share with friends. Unreal Engine is an immersive 3D game engine that powers some of the most popular video games in the world. Rather than focusing solely on basic concepts of computer programming, you'll jump straight into building a video game. In this first lesson, you will be learning about collision detection. In the real world, it's easy to understand how you can sit in a chair, stand on the floor, or hit a ball because they're all physical objects. In the virtual 3D world, the concept of physical objects need to be defined in code. The moment when two objects collide or overlap is called a collision. When objects collide, the engine can identify which objects collide and how each object should react. For these lessons, we will be using the Unreal Engine Learning Kit. You can find it by following the link below or search for Unreal Learning Kit in the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Let's open up the project and let's begin. First, let's go through the interface. By pressing Ctrl and Spacebar, the content browser will pop up. The content browser holds all the assets of your project. You can also change the color of the folders to make it easier to find them. Let's change the hour of code to a blue color. Right click on the folder and choose set color. Then choose a blue color from the color wheel. For this first lesson, we will be using the hour of code template. Navigate to hour of code, then go to maps and double click the level underscore HOC underscore world. The place actors panel contains assets like lights and trigger volumes. This can be displayed by navigating to the top of the screen and click the box with the plus sign. These assets will be available in every project you create. This is different than the content browser, because the content browser will also contain assets that you can import from 3D design programs, like Autodesk's Maya, 3D Studio Max, or Blender. The term actors is used to identify the various objects or elements that are in a level. When navigating in a viewport, there are a few different ways to control the camera. First, these controls work with no other keys or buttons pressed. Hold left mouse button and drag the mouse to move the camera forward, backward, or rotate it right and left. Hold right mouse button and drag the mouse to rotate the camera up, down, left or right. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, you can use that to zoom in and out. Next, if you've ever played a first person game on a computer, you probably use the WASD keys to move around. And these controls will feel natural. The WASD controls can be used whenever you hold down right mouse button. To move the camera up or down, we use the E and Q keys. On the top right, we find the world outliner. In here, we find all the actors that are currently placed inside our level. We can set items invisible by clicking the eyeball button. Below the world outliner, we find the details panel. The details panel will show editable attributes of any actor that is selected in a viewport. Any asset placed into the viewport is referred to as an actor. You can think of them as similar to actors on a stage, but they are actors in your game. Select the player start actor and you will see the details panel update. If you need to deselect an actor, hold control and click the actor again. We will also be using the world settings. To open this window, Click the settings button next to the details button. This panel contains information about the game's 3D world. At this point, we are viewing the persistent level. A persistent level is just a map. This is the map that is loaded first and stays loaded. You can then load or unload other maps into this persistent level, which you can do at the bottom right corner. For these lessons, we are not going to use that. To play your game, navigate to the top bar and click on the green arrow. The game will now play inside the editor. To control the character, left click anywhere in the viewport. We can walk around just like any other platform game using the WASD keys, spacebar to jump, and the mouse to rotate. You'll notice that your character falls through the platform in the tunnel and lands at the bottom of the pit. This is because the platform has no collision associated with it. It is only being drawn visibly in the world. The game doesn't yet know that the player should be able to stand on this platform. To fix our problem with the platform, 
we will need to establish a collision area for that object. The object has a shape and texture that allow it to be visualized in the game, but this is separate from its collision properties. We need to add a collision volume as an invisible shape that is attached to the object. We can make the collision match the shape of the object or customize the shape to fit the needs of our game. Most of our work in this project will be using a simple collision shape that closely matches the object shape. Select the platform actor in the viewport and press Ctrl E. This will open the static mesh editor for this asset. With the static mesh editor open, click on show and then enable simple collision. Next, navigate to the collision in the menu bar and choose the add 10 DOP Z simplified collision. This will create a simple collision volume that fits around the platform. You will see a green shape appear around the platform. It will not fit exactly to the platform and it does not need to. It's just to be close enough to work for our gameplay purposes. You can always scale, rotate and move the collision to fit your gameplay needs. Click the save button in the top left to apply the changes and then close the static mesh editor by clicking the X button in the top right of the window. When we go to show, we can enable the collision option. We can now see the collision boxes that every static mesh has. We can also see that the platform has collision now. Press Alt plus C to toggle off the collision preview in the viewport. Now that we have created collision on the platform, let's play the level again and check if everything is working correctly. The character can now stand on the platform. Now we need to complete this hallway so the player can safely reach the other side. We can duplicate the platform a few times to create a parkour path across the pit. First, select the platform. Using the move gizmo, hold the Alt key then click and drag on the red arrow of the gizmo to duplicate the platform down the hallway. You will need to let go of the Alt key once you have created the duplicate. Then hold it again to create a new duplicate. Once you have your few platforms in place, test your level to see if you can get across. If you fell on the pit, you probably noticed that your character is unable to make it out. This is referred to as a showstopper or a soft lock. The game has not ended, but there's no way for it to progress. If you want the player to die or restart, you must add that manually. We can address this by placing a pain causing volume in the pit that will reset the player and send them back to the player start. In the place actor step, type pain in the search bar. Then drag a pain causing volume into the pit. Once you have placed the volume in your level, press W to use the move gizmo and press R to use the skill gizmo. Place it into a location where the character collision will touch it when they fall anywhere into the pit. Play the game again and check that your character resets when they jump to the pit. You might need to move the pain causing volume around a little bit to get it to work the way you want. Now that you can jump through the end of the hallway, try jumping off the large island at the end of the level. Yeah, that seems some safe. But is it? Go ahead, give it a try. What happens? Press escape to stop the game and press the number one to reset your view to level one. It looks like we are missing yet another collision. In this case, the player just keeps falling. This is because the game doesn't know that you want to restart after falling a specified distance. We will address this issue by enabling the kill Z bounce a plane that will reset the character when it touches it. In the world settings panel, scroll down to the world section and toggle on enable world bounce checks. You may have to click the down arrow to show advanced options. Next, set the kill Z to a value of minus 500. Play the game again and now after falling into the void, the character will respawn at the beginning of the level. Once the player has made it through the hallway jumps, they see exciting new destinations that are floating in the sky. The only way to get to the next destination is a path of floating islands. This is where you come in. You will add some small floating islands to reach the next destination. They can be found in the content browser, under content, 
hour of code and then the static meshes folder. Click and drag one of the sm underscore floating island underscore s asset into your scene. Use the arrows on the move gizmo to move the first floating platform into your desired location. If you do not see the moving gizmo, select your floating island and press the W key. You can deselect the move, rotate and scale grid by unselecting them at the top of your viewport. You can also set the grid smaller or larger by clicking the number next to it. With one floating island in your scene, you can duplicate it just like you did with the platforms. Hold Alt plus click and drag one of the arrows of the move gizmo to create another floating island. Create a path that will reach the far platform. Want to quickly test your jumps in the game? Click the three dots to the right of the play button. Change the spawn player at option to current camera location. Then click the play button to start your player at your current camera position. Make sure you're above some solid ground before pressing play. Don't forget to change it back to default player start when you're done. Be sure to save your work frequently by navigating to File and then Save All. You can also save your game by pressing Ctrl Shift S on the keyboard. That's it for lesson one. In the next lesson, we will continue to build a more challenging game by adding moving platforms, as well as adding a checkpoint to help ease some of the frustration that comes from having to play the same section over and over. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye.